Hello, I'm Matthew Chapman from Matthew Chapman Ministries. I am so glad that you decided to join me today. We've been teaching on prosperity. Prosperity is an important topic. So many people, they, want, they don't want to talk about it. They think that money is the root of all evil, but it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. So there's nothing wrong with talking about prosperity. The Bible says in Psalms 35, 27, it says the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God delights in our prospering. It, 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 makes, it makes God happy when we prosper. You know, as a father, I have three children. And you know, I wouldn't be happy if my children weren't succeeding. I wouldn't be happy if my, my daughter wasn't doing well. My two sons weren't doing well. I am happy when I see my children doing well. Every good father, every good parent enjoys seeing their children prosper. And so if us being in the natural, we enjoy seeing our children prosper, how much more would God our Father delight in seeing us prosper, not just financially, but prospering in our relationships, prospering in our physical bodies, prospering on the job, representing Him accurately in the earth. You know, sometimes the only Jesus that people see is us. We represent Jesus in the earth. And a lot of times people are turned off by what they see. They don't want to hear about Christianity. They say that Christianity is all about hip hypocrisy and people, they act one way in church, but it's totally different once they're outside of those church doors. But as believers, God wants us to be his ambassadors. And God does not want his ambassadors sick. God doesn't want his ambassadors broke. God doesn't want his ambassadors struggling. God doesn't want his ambassadors not you know, walking in excellence on the job, not prospering on the job. God wants us to prosper in every area of our lives. And it's on us. It's not on God. It's on us. And so what I want to talk to you today about, I want to talk to you about the importance of the word of God in reference to prosperity. A believer cannot prosper without knowing God's thoughts, without knowing what the word of God has to say about it. So therefore, we have to realize that there is power in the word of God. God and his word are one. If God can do it, his word can do it. If God can heal, his word can heal. If God can give you peace, his word will give you peace. If God can prosper you financially, his word will prosper you financially. You cannot separate God and his word. And so I want to look at that today. So we'll start off in John chapter one. And the Bible says in verse one of John, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So you notice you can't separate God and his word. Whatever the word of God can do, God can do. So, you know, our prior lesson, we talked about how God prospered Job. We talked about how God prospered Abraham. We talked about how God prospered Solomon. But do you know what? The same way God prospered those men in the Old Testament, God will prosper us the same way. God is no respecter of persons. But you know what? God will prosper us through his word as we act on the word of God, as we become doers of the word of God, as we do what the Bible says concerning tithing, as we do what the Bible says about giving, as we do what the Bible says about being diligent, as we do what the Bible says about being faithful, as we, as we walk in integrity, as we do the different things that God has told us in his word to do. Do you know that we will experience success? Do you know that we will be prosperous? So let's look at some of these scriptures that I believe are, are foundational, but yet they're so powerful in, in my opinion. And if you look at uh, Psalms 112, it says in verse one, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments. See, you can delight in something, but it's something totally different when you delight greatly. Delight greatly. See, God, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, it says God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Not just half seek him, not just seek him every now and then, but he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. And so just like we have to diligently seek him, we have to diligently read his word. We have to diligently study his word because there are so many ideas out there. Just like I've said in the past, people say, oh, man, God doesn't want you rich. God doesn't want you wealthy. You know, God might be teaching you something through that sickness. So just bear the sickness. People are ignorant of the word of God. That's why they say things that are contrary to the word of God. But we have to understand that the word of God will produce whatever it is that we place on the inside of us, whatever it is we need. That's what the word of God will produce. But notice in Psalms 112, it says the man that delights greatly in his commandments. Verse three, it says wealth and riches shall be in his house. 
The man who delights greatly in the commandments of God, the man who studies the word of God. And it ain't just the man who studies the word of God. It's the man who studies the word and it's the man who does the word of God. That's the man that's blessed according to James chapter one. But let's look at another scripture. Let's look at Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one, starting with verse eight. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, after you've meditated the word of God day and night, it says, for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. But notice it doesn't say anything about God. It doesn't say God will make you prosperous. God will give you good success. It says after you have meditated day and night, you will be able to make your way prosperous and you will have good success after you've meditated the word of God. Our success comes by us meditating the word of God. It comes by speaking the word of God. It comes by thinking about the word of God constantly, knowing the promises of God, knowing the will of God. You know, there's power in the word of God. But what we have to do is we have to make sure that the word of God is constantly coming on the inside of us. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our success is based on how much we hear and how much we do. We have to constantly hear the word, constantly hear the word. We have to saturate ourselves with the word of God. Think about the word of God. Play the word in the morning. Play the word of God in the afternoon. Confess the word of God on a daily basis, multiple times a day. You have to become consumed with the word of God. The word of God is like a seed. You know, and I've said this in the past when I've ministered along these lines that you can grow whatever it is that you need. You need healing. You need health. You need prosperity. You need peace. You need a change in your situation and circumstance. You can grow whatever you need. The Bible calls itself seed. It is the incorruptible seed. And the Bible talks in Mark chapter four. And we're going to look at that now. Matter of fact, we're going to look at it in the Amplified. But in Mark chapter four, the Bible says it says he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And in verse 14, it says this. The sower sows the word. The ones along the path are those who have the word sown in their hearts. But when they hear the word, Satan comes at once and by force takes away the message. In other words, they hear the word of God. And once they hear the word of God, immediately Satan comes. And then it says, verse 16, in the same way, the ones sown upon stony ground are those who, when they hear the word at once, receive and accept and welcome it with joy. But they have no real root in themselves. And so they endure for a little while, a little while. And then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately are offended. They become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. There are so many Christians. They'll hear the word of faith or they'll hear the word of God being preached and they'll hear somebody say, God wants you prosperous. God wants you well. God wants you healed. God wants you blessed. And they'll get excited about it. And then they'll be excited for maybe a week. Or they'll be excited for maybe a month. And they'll be excited for maybe a couple months. Then they'll say, you know, this stuff don't work. They'll say this stuff only works for preachers. This stuff only works for the fivefold ministry. This stuff only works for certain people. But we have to realize that the word will work for whosoever works it. And then it says in verse 19, it says the cares and anxieties of the world and distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches, the craving and passionate desires for other things. They creep in and choke and suffocate the word. And then the word becomes fruitless. You know why so many Christians are not enjoying the benefits of the word of God? Because other things are choking the word of God. Social media is choking the word of God. Entertainment is choking the word of God. Sports Center is choking the word of God. The NBA, Major League Baseball, the NFL. Now, there's nothing wrong with those things, but the problem is we have an oversaturation of entertainment. We have an oversaturation of social media. So you'll see people walking around and they're on their phones. If you're driving on 77 or wherever you find yourself and you're on the interstate, you'll see people looking at their phones. You'll see people in traffic, they're on their phones. Why? Because our society has totally been saturated with entertainment, constantly being saturated with social media. You got Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have all these different outlets on social media and we're constantly looking at that. And you know what we're doing? We're neglecting the word of God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 19, I believe it around verse 20, it says so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. But it was only after the word of God grew. So the Bible has to grow in our lives. We have to constantly listen to it, 
over and over again. We must listen to it. We must read it. We got to hear it. Your, your spirit, man, is the production center. Your spirit, man, will produce whatever it is you place on the inside of yourself. And people are producing, people are, are putting on their insides profanity. They're putting um, um, the wrong kind of music. I mean, it's all kind of stuff out there. And what's happening, if they're not careful, their spirit, man, is going to produce whatever it is they put on the inside. It's almost like a field. And I heard Charles Capps give this example. He said he was a farmer and he's going on to be with the Lord. But he said, my, 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 uh, my farm, the ground that the farm is on, it's not going to say, hey, you can't plant marijuana in me. I'm not growing marijuana. He says, my farm, the ground on my farm will produce whatever you put in there. So if you don't put, you know, healing scriptures in there, if you don't put prosperity scriptures in there, scriptures on, on, on peace, and, and how God wants to restore relationships and things of that nature. If you don't put that in your production center, your production center is only going to produce what you put in it. And if all you're looking at is fear and, and hate, I mean, it's all kind of stuff on social media. That's not the stuff you want to put on your on the inside. You want to put the word of God. And once you realize that the word of God is, is God speaking to you. And when you realize that the word of God will produce whatever it is I need, then that means I got to keep putting the word in. And keep putting the word in because the word of God will produce. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, it says the word of God is alive and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is, is alive. It's not just a book. There's books all over the world. There's millions of books out there. But there's only one book that's alive. And that's the word of God. And that word, once you put it on the inside of you, and once you speak that word, Jesus said, He said, whosoever shall say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which ye say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. You keep putting that scripture on the inside and you keep meditating on that scripture that I can have what I say. I can have what I say. Then eventually you start saying some things and you start saying it in faith. And then you'll start saying, I believe I'm wealthy. I believe that the blessings of Abraham are coming upon me and overtaking me. I believe that I walk in divine health. I believe that by Jesus Christ, I'm healed. I believe that God is restoring my relationship with my children. I believe that God is restoring my relationship with my parents or whatever the lost relationship is. You got to start confessing and believing that whatever I'm saying is going to come to pass. So I want to encourage you today. The word is the source of our prosperity. You determine how much prosperity you walk in by how much word you put on the inside. You know, the Bible talks about how the word will produce 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold. You determine the measure that you will reap from. If you only give the word 30 fold attention, then you'll reap 30 fold. If you give the word 60 fold attention, then you'll reap 60 fold. But if you give that word 100 percent of your time, you're thinking about it. Sometimes you got to go a period of time where you turn the television off and all you're doing is listen to the word. Sometimes you got to get in your car and instead of listening to the radio, you got to you know, listen to the word. And as you consume the word of God, the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter four, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The problem with a lot of Christians, and I've said this before, is they're just simply living on, living on bread alone. They're not living on the word of God. We must realize that we cannot live on bread alone. We have to live on the word of God. The word of God has to be our source. And if we're going to experience the prosperous life that God has for us, the Bible has to be our source. Because remember, God and his word are one. So I just want to encourage you today, stay with God and don't just stay with God, but also consume his word. See, consuming the word will help you stay with God because I'm constantly reading the word of God. I'm constantly praying. I'm constantly, you know, confessing the word of God. And then as you continue to do that, you'll start to see the results. And as you start to see the results, how can I backslide on a God whose word is true and it's been evident in my life? It's hard for me to turn my back on somebody who's been there for me, who has has never done me wrong, who's been faithful to me. Hey, if you've been faithful to me, I have no choice but to be faithful to you. So I just want to encourage you today. Make the word of God your number one priority. I'm not saying make it your only priority. But I will make it a top priority because the Bible says once again that God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So once again, I want to thank you for watching. If you want to watch more podcasts or watch more video, www.matthewchapmanministries.org. God bless you. Talk to you later.